Hey, 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 what is up guys? It is your boy Speed here and today I'm going to be showing you how to shut down hard carries, how to shut down a hero like any mage while getting farmed yourself. So very often what happens in pubs is that players, they'll have a good start, they'll do all right, and then they start fighting a lot. And then they lose a fight. And what happens when they lose that fight? The enemy hard carry gets super farmed, they've been split pushing the entire time, and all of a sudden, they go from a very farmed Shadow Fiend, let's use that for instance, as we'll be looking at it in this game. You'll be a farmed Shadow Fiend, and all of a sudden, you're not that farmed. You're going to die really easily to the enemy Animage, and you're going to lose. So in this game, I'm going to show you how to not let that happen, how to continue to scale and shut down hard carries while getting super farmed yourself. And of course, sign up to the Game League website 50% off right now to get some of the best content. It is a limited time offer, so if you don't get it now, you may never get a 50% off deal. That's half, right guys? That's pretty quick math by the way i post every single day you guys probably know that by now a lot of you but if you're new here welcome if you don't know about the game loop website all the content we post is not here on youtube a lot of it is also over on the website and it is new exclusive content on very cool topics a lot of things that i know will apply to you guys i've listed some awesome videos recently that we're making i also just made a full medusa course i mean there's so many things coming to the website that i'm excited to share with you so for 50 percent off click the link down below right now go sign up and i hope to see you guys there because i really do believe if you click that link and sign up you're gonna learn so much and gain mmr very quickly now let's get into the video so the first thing you want to do is itemize against the enemy carry you want to buy the item that allows you to kill them now guys look at my items <laughs> don't do this on shadow fiend it was it was experimental all right give me a break but uh the shadow blade is not let's just assume i have treads and therefore my items look relatively normal minus the null talisman which is not bad on sf but getting back to the point why do I buy a Shadow Blade here, right? Why do I buy a Shadow Blade and not a Yules? Well, I mean, Yules could be all right. It definitely could be. It, it could let me kill the enemy mage. However, he could counterspell it, right? There's a chance he could counterspell my Yules and I can't combo him. Also, at the same time, I would rather have some right-click damage and go into a right-click build so that I'm not a magical damage build this game. Could I go magical damage? Yeah, I could. It's okay against Venno. It's good against Necro. But I wanted to go physical this game. That was my take. And so you can see right off the bat here, what am I going to do, right? Because I want to continue farming. I'm playing Shadow Fiend. Let's say you're playing Storm or Ember. This applies as well, right? Void Spirit. Quap, doesn't matter. You want to continue to farm, but you also want to pick on the enemy carry when you have such a high level advantage, right? Especially when, you know, this anime, she was not having a great game. He's 0-1 with 50 CS at 13 minutes, having a horrible game. I want to make sure he continues to have a horrible game. So what do I do? I buy the Shadow Blade, I hide it, and I immediately invade where I think he's going to be. Why do I think he's in this jungle? Well, he's not shoving in the bottom wave. He's not shoving in the mid wave, so he's probably in here. Now, I don't find him, and so what do I do? I go deep into the jungle, I tuck myself in here, and I clean up a cam. I just watched the minimap, frankly. I'm not trying to do anything. I'm literally just going to hit creeps and stay out of vision. I want the enemy team to think that I have no items right now and I'm just jungling on my side of the map. And because of this, because of the fact that I don't show anywhere, the enemy gets comfortable. He gets comfortable and he goes to the bottom wave. On top of that, the Rubik even TPs bottom to hopefully set up onto the Pangolier. And because of that, I go in here. I specifically say in the mic, Pango, do not scare him. Right? Communication is key. I say, Pango, do not scare him. And I'm going to be able to walk over. I assume he's going to see us to creep. And I pick up the kill. There's nothing the Rubik can do. He died way before <laughs> uh, anything could happen. And now I farm up the creep wave. I get a kill. And I can continue to snowball. And those are the type of plays. And we'll continue to look at stuff like this. Those are the plays that allow you to stay ahead and shut down the carry. You have to identify if you can kill them or not. If you can't, you need to buy an item that can do so. Or you need to not try at all. Now, in this game, I knew with the Shadow Blade I could, and therefore I do. And when things begin to go very well for you, what you can start doing is kind of just chasing them around the map. So at this point, I saw him very low mid. He actually just got a kill onto my Ancient Apparition. But I still had Shadow Blade coming up soon. And what do you guys know about carry players? They're greedy. This Animage does not have a Battle Fury. So what does that tell me? It tells me he's going to try to hit the wave, right? He's going to be greedy. By the way, this is an Immortal player, right? This is not some, some Smurf game. No, this is an Immortal player. But every player has similar tendencies. They have to optimize their hero. Any mage is optimized by hitting lane creep. So is PA, so is Spectre, so is most heroes that don't have illusions, right? Only heroes with skeletons or illusions can just full-time jungle and be okay with it. It's not even optimal, but they can be okay with it. Any mage is not okay with hitting jungle creeps, and therefore I can walk in and just solo kill him with a little bit of decent execution. Now, as we talked about, I still want to... And this is very important. I still want to take aggressive farm. This is a concept that 99% of players never get correct ever, 
ever. Every time I've played in a two or three KMMR game in the last like year, it feels like they're always on their own side of the map. And you might be saying, well, speed, I'm on my own side of the map because my team will never invade with me. Because you don't need your team. The only teammate you need is an observer ward. Now in this case, my teammate did put the ward down on the hill. But what I would do if I don't have a teammate who's going to do that, I will just simply do it myself. Walk up if you want to play this this part of the map aggressively, walk up and throw down a hill on the ward. Odds are it won't even get dewarded, especially if you protect it. And so as you can see, I also have three observer wards. Now is this overkill? Yes, absolutely. But this is what I do when I want to play alone, when I want to play like a psycho. I buy the wards and you want to do this as well. It's really going to help you guys. I need to have vision to make plays, correct? I dive very easily as Shadow Fiend especially. I, it's super easy to kill my hero, and therefore if I don't have vision, I can't make plays. And that is going to be my mantra for this entire game. Now you can see at this point, because I'm positioned so aggressively, I can always take nice angles at the enemy mage. And so yeah, I'm going to continue to farm. Remember, you don't want to just chase people around the map. I clear up a nice little camp, pop my arcane boots, pop my arcane ring. I saw him farming mid, so I'm like, oh, maybe he'll push in the mid wave. Now he didn't, so it's fine. I clear out the mid wave really quickly. I push it in. Now I see him jungling here, so I'm like, okay, maybe I can kill him. The only problem with this area is very often it's warded, and so I, I did believe that there was a high chance he would actually see me. Fortunately for me though, uh, I think he assumed I would back off or not make this play, uh, because nonetheless, I once again assumed he would go for the creep wave, and with a little bit of patience, I pick up another kill. Now I want you guys to think about, because you're probably saying to yourself right now, Oh my god, this anime is so bad. The only reason why you can kill him speed is because anime is a horrible player. What would most players be doing in my position right now? Be honest. What would they be doing right now? Look at the map. Look at the map. Where would they be? I guarantee the far majority of players would be top team fighting right now. Now, that's not necessarily a bad play. After all, you can help your team win the fight. But the playstyle I'm showing you right now will make you the most farmed hero in the game and allow you to shut down the enemy carry at the same time. So if you do not trust your team to carry or you are playing a hero that can fight but also scale, the playstyle I'm currently showing you works extremely well. You will almost always be top net worth if you play like I'm currently playing, which is putting down deep wards in the enemy safe lane, specifically the enemy off lane, you want to go here, you put in deep wards, you clear all of these camps, you clear the lane when you can, and you kill the heroes if they walk in alone, right? If you see an enemy support just wandering in to deward you and they're alone, kill them and you will become absolutely huge. By the way guys, I think a lot of the time um, players watch a video like this and say, oh speed, but I, I can't kill the enemy safe laner in, in my particular game, so I'm not going to try. Well, in this clip right here, I knew I couldn't kill the enemy, I don't have ulti, like there's no way I can execute that in my opinion that I could kill him. And so I just harass him out of lane. Now he's half HP, he has the jungle and half HP, and once again, he cannot take lane creeps. And of course, for an enemy mage who has four deaths and no battle fear yet, is quite the disaster. Look at his net worth. This is not because he's bad at farming, right guys? It's because he's been getting pressured to the ends of the earth. And also at the same time, you might be saying, oh, speed, but if I was to do this, my team would, they would flame me and they, they, they would run down mid and... Okay, let me explain to you why they probably wouldn't flame you if you do this. Number one, you're killing the enemy carry. If you do this incorrectly and you never pressure the enemy carry, you never kill them, yeah, it probably won't work out too well. And number two, if you are shutting down a hard carry like Annie Mage, the hard carry Annie Mage is probably not going to contribute to the fight. So they're going to be in a 4v4. That's totally fine, right? A 4v4 is fine. Now sure, they have their mid laner and my team doesn't, which is a bit sketchy, but I'm really just using this game as an example of the extreme. Do you think I split push the entire game every game I play? Of course not. This is just something you can do if you really want to be greedy. Now for the next five minutes of the game that you didn't just see, all I was doing was just clearing through their side of the map. I would go from camp to camp. If I saw the wave shoving in, I would clear the wave. And I just rinse repeated that for a long time. Now you can see my team actually ends up losing uh, two fights in a row, but the net worth doesn't change really that much, right? We do end up losing about two or three K net worth in the swing, but it's not too bad, right? It's not too bad. After all, my team ended up losing the fight very hard, right? It's not like that's going to be every single fight where they go three to one. Also, do understand the reason why most carry players, and this is a big deal, guys, really understand this concept. The reason why most carry players get flamed in particular without even realizing it, and they'll never know. The, the reason is because they don't farm aggressively, right? If you don't take farm and do the things that I just did, that was a psycho play, but if you don't take aggressive farm, and you don't force rotations and pressure heroes when you can pressure them, 
you deserve to get flamed for farming. No, keep in mind, if you are playing Spectre, you might not want to be miles up into the lane trying to make this play, right? And so the reason why people get flamed is because their team is getting pressured super hard, right? The enemy team is ganking them, the enemy team has, you know, control of three-fourths of the map, and they're just farming their triangle when they could easily throw down a ward on the enemy team's side of the map, and after they throw down a ward on the enemy team's side of the map, play there. They can farm there, and often it's actually safer than your own side of the map. Alright, now coming here is my favorite part of the entire game. It's honestly a good play in it. It shows why map awareness is just so crucial. This is one of those plays that takes, really in my opinion, years uh, to develop and read. So I ended up scanning the area out and I saw that the enemy was farming my triangle. After that, I see him pushing the bot wave. Now what do I want to do when I see him pushing the bot wave? You see how I specifically move my camera here? Why do I do that? Because I want to see exact the exact direction the enemy is moving after he shoves the wave. You see how there's still vision after he clears the wave? This can give you key information to know whether or not someone is backing or continuing off the wave. This is so important to the point where pros will actually fake the movement they're running during this small duration of vision. So let's say this is a pro animage. What they'll do is clear the wave and if they want the enemy team to think they're backing but they actually want to go kill the next creep wave, they'll walk back while the vision is still lingering and then go. But this animage didn't do that and I saw him walk forward, right? So he didn't really fake it. He didn't go long enough. He had, all he had to do was wait a second or two and I would I would imagine he would be backing off. But he didn't do that. He made it very clear to me that he was going to keep going. And because of that, I can go for the pickoff, right? I all in for it. See, so yeah, I hit my tower <laughs> and I one shot him. 800 gold. I don't know why that was 800 gold. He must have been on a bit of a kill streak. That was funny though. And yeah, those are the type of plays crucial. That lingering vision is something that honestly, I, maybe a lot of people don't even know about or have ever used, but I'll use it very often almost every game but yeah that's going to be about all for today's video i'll show you as we end up the game uh but i hope you guys enjoyed i hope you learned a lot as i <laughs> i think i kill the am again <laughs> i was just picking on this guy <laughs> but, but this is how dota works right if i didn't kill him those other five times or whatever it was of course i can't kill him here but because he's so under farmed and i'm so farmed i, I can just straight up right click him to death in my stun duration or fear duration but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did and you liked this video, smash the like button, subscribe. Of course, consider signing up to the Game Leap website. The content there is similar, often better in my opinion, uh, believe it or not. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Before you leave, just want to say a quick message. If you're trying to get better at Dodo or you just enjoyed that video, uh, I know this is pretty general and you're going to hear this quite a bit from me. But I recommend you sign up to GameLeap.com. Why? Because I put a lot of effort into the content over there and generally the effort I do there is different from the content you're going to see here on YouTube. It is different. In fact, I usually go a lot more in depth on topics or into niche topics that help you get to the next level even faster because on YouTube, I, I often have to keep it more mainstream. And that's even why I'm putting it at the end of this YouTube video. That's why this is at the end, because a lot of people just watch five minutes. They skip through just for like the dopamine spike. But if you are interested in actually getting better at Dota, I recommend you go to the description down below, get your discount right now by clicking the link sign up, use the discount code that you're going to see there. And I hope to see you there right now. So click it. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.